What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Where Did All My Friends Go, a podcast about life in the industry. I'm your host, Patrick Tarnowski. Tarnowski, gosh, every time. I can never get my whole name out there without like throwing in some M's or something. But we got Matt Reed with us, as always. And today, we got a special treat. We got Pat from Broadside on the show. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, pleasure is all ours. We're very, we're very excited. Cool, man. I'm happy to be here. Right on. Well, let's hop right into it. So you just released the singles Lucid, Bang, Cruel, and uh, One Last Time from your new record, Hotel Blue, which releases November 10th. How's the response been so far for the singles and what can fans expect from the new album? Uh, the response has been really, really positive. It's been really cool seeing everybody like uh, experience songs for the first time yeah. uh, as we're putting them out uh, just because it's been a while, uh, I think like almost three years, maybe over three years since Into the Raging Sea came out. So yeah, it's been a little bit. Yeah. So giving people new music and seeing them react to it and hearing everybody's like thoughts and feedback on it everybody's loving them which is which is a real uh real weight off our shoulders but yeah yeah <laughs> bet it's always nerve-wracking uh you know especially if you're like testing out some new sounds and stuff to see what people think oh for sure there's a lot of that all over the record we kind of we went into it each song kind of represents like its own uh story so to speak okay. uh much like different guests in a hotel overall theme of like hotel blue so each song follows like a guest in a room or like a set of guests in rooms oh that's really uh, cool. kind of is a story for them right on that's that's an awesome concept so does every yeah. song have like a guest for it uh it does it doesn't really go out and say like hey this is one person this sure. is another person these are two people but sure. it's more like there's no real like theme that goes through it other than the normal like you know love uh loss um doubting yourself kind of thing um but it we did go into it with that mindset of like these are different rooms to different people type thing it's awesome i like it you'll be hitting the road uh in november for most of the remaining of the year with this wildlife uh what cities are you most looking forward to playing uh we're looking forward to uh, oh crap! I don't even remember what days we're, <laughs> what city specifically we're doing. There's a there's a there's a load of them. I mean, you're gone there's, for like there two are months. A lot. Of... Yeah, we're gone for a lot longer than we were the first time we went out with them because when we went out last time with them, they had just done the West Coast mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks beforehand, um, or a couple months actually. Right. Um. So we're actually hitting the West Coast on this one. Uh. Let's see. Let's see. Uh. LA is going to be cool, of course. Regent yeah. Theater, we love playing there. Um, but da, da, da. Chicago is always good to us. Um, Boston is always really good to us. Philadelphia really comes out for us as well. Um, and then Orlando is like a hometown show for the three of us now, since we all live in Orlando. Nice, yeah. Um, so that's cool. And then Richmond, of course, because the band is originally from Richmond. Yeah, that's where it originated. That's be, yeah, that's going to be Cuckoo Bananas. Some have said. So will this be uh, the first time you're playing some of these new songs live? Uh yes. Uh most of them, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because on our tour that we just did with the home team and Honey Revenge, we just had one last time and cruel out. Mm -hmm. And then we did a three show run with Magnolia Park and then a three show run with Set It Off. Uh that was those six shows were the first time we ever played Bang Live. Okay. Um, and Josh was able to come out and do his part on those three shows that we have at Magnolia Park, and it was really cool. Right nice. on. Yeah, I think we had one of those. One of those questions was, uh, "It are you guys going to have any?" Because um, there is the "I Miss You" um, collaboration uh, with Oliver in this wildlife. Is is mm -hmm. he going to be popping out, and are they going to be doing that song live? Um, they haven't told us yet. Uh, okay. <laughs> but Ollie said that if they do play the song, he is going to sing it. Right on. That, I mean, that'd be fun. And yeah. I think Chicago is like the close is there. There isn't a Minnesota date, right? I think Not Chicago's this time. Closest. No. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought because I was looking, I was like, oh come on, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah. We last time with them, we played uh, 
Burnsville at the garage. Dude, that's a good one. That's a good it place. Is a good, I love that venue. Yeah, it's it's a it's a fun time. And honestly, it's one of the things I like about it is it's one of the last remaining Minnesota all age venues. Oh, really? Yeah. There's really not a lot. Wow. Damn, yeah. that sucks. Yeah, because I even saw did you have you ever played the warehouse in lacrosse? Um, no. Oh, so that was a that's an iconic venue. And I just saw today that they're closing it. Oh, wow. So, so like it was iconic for being like uh, all ages and the stairs. There is like, oh, man, it's like a stairway to hell. And there's always <laughs> like this like joke of like pictures of like taking the stairs with your eight by 10 cabs and stuff. You know, mm-hmm. back in the day when every bass player had an eight by 10. <laughs> yep. I just got one again. So Ooh. that that would have been me. Look at you. She should have brought it. You should should yeah. have uh, put lacrosse on there. Should have. We don't really get the <laughs> opportunity to play Wisconsin that much. Yeah. Uh, uh, outside of like Milwaukee Warped, Mil- we played. Yeah. Uh, the Rave. Yeah. We played the Rave. Set it off back in 2019, and then on the home team's headliner that we did this earlier this year, we played. Uh, I don't remember the like suburb of Milwaukee, but we played it like X Ray Arcade. Yep. That's what so mm-hmm. it's funny that you say that because that's literally the only two like venues I could even think of in the Milwaukee yeah. area. <laughs> I know and, there's and, more, but and I have a bunch of family up there because my mom's originally from Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Uh, so my cousin and his partner came down to the show at X Ray. We hung out with them, had some pizza. Right on. I I have never been to the X Ray arcade, but I heard it's fun. It's a good place. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I also I have to, I got a point. Also, you have an incredible memory when it comes to shows you played. Oh, dude, so it's awesome! Like it's you're like so oh, yeah. selective. <laughs> yeah, it's I like when it comes to like shows that we've played, I'll get it like ninety five percent of the time. Sure. Uh, but anything else, it's like my brain is Swiss cheese. Like there's just holes everywhere. Oh, <laughs> that's like my uh, one of my best friends and my guitar player. Like he will, he is. Some he can't remember how many fingers are on his fucking hand, but this dude will remember a venue in like some suburb of like Indiana that we played at 10 years ago. He'll remember it, remember who we played with. It's nuts. Oh, like, geez, that dude can just remember that stuff, but he can't remember to call you back in five minutes. Yeah, that's exactly the way I am. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I play bass. I only got to count to four, dude. Yeah, it's, it's great. It, it allows you to, you know, kind of just get to whip your stuff around on stage. It's fun. It's, bass is a fun time. It is. Or unless, you know, if you've ever seen on, on TikTok or ever played with them, the bass player from Stop, Drop, or Wind. I'm not familiar. Bat shit. Look them oh, up. Oh, God. I will. So good. Like this is I this dude makes me want to watch videos about people playing bass. Oh, because yeah. he just rules. <laughs> so they he's like a he's a their songs are super catchy, but they call it prog punk. Like because they're very they're very technical, but okay, check cool. them out. They're fun, they're good stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, for sure. So when like we've talked a lot about touring and you know playing shows so far what do you like to do like when you have days off on tour like you got this almost two month run do you prefer to like lay low or relax and go exploring uh one thing about broadside is that if we have the opportunity to go outside we will yeah um we like to go hiking we'll try to use google maps to try to find like a walking trail or like some kind of park and go walk around at cool um more recently uh between the off days between uh the magnolia park and the set it off run we had like four days off um so we booked an airbnb in the mountains in north carolina where if you've been watching our tiktok all of our videos of us like playing the new songs were taken in that airbnb um (laughs) and then one day we were like you know what let's try to go find somewhere to walk we found this trail it was like two miles all the way around we were out there for like three hours just hanging out uh we found a waterfall Right Ollie on. and I, Ollie and I drank from the stream. It was very cold water. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I don't have any extra limbs growing yet, so 
So that's I good. think it was safe. Uh, but yeah, if it if if we have a day off, the first uh, order of business is trying to find somewhere to like walk around at like a outdoor thing yeah if we don't find anything or it's too far out of the way we'll go to like the mall or something you know classic like go find a van or go find a hot topic and just sit in the food court type thing yeah i mean like because the thing is is what a lot of people don't really know about touring is that you're yeah you're seeing all these places all these cities all these states but you're seeing it inside a van and then inside the venue Mm -hmm. And then inside somewhere to sleep, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a hotel. It's some place you're going to sleep somewhere. Yeah. I'm closing my eyes for at least six hours at some <laughs> point in time. <laughs> could be someone's floor. Could be the van. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could be the venue. Done yeah. that. <laughs> I, I saw a meme a while ago where it was like, oh, you you're in a band you get to tour you get to see so many cool places and then it's like the cool places i get to see it's like a van bench uh <laughs> a, a, a bathroom stall without a door on it and then like yeah. a veggie platter yeah <laughs> yeah well veggie platter man that's, that's a bougie venue you're playing that's the dream yeah. that's I the just, dream <laughs> i love me a good room temp uh cherry tomato <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean like it, touring's touring's a ton of fun so wait but it's a lot and it's tiring. It is, yeah. And you uh, know, I think it's awesome that uh you go find stuff to do because I always like to do that if I'm having off day. I just want to walk around. I just want to walk. I don't want to be anywhere near a vehicle mm -hmm. <laughs> for as yeah. long as possible. And then it, a lot of times in my uh experience, it's like people are like, Oh, well, what did you get to do in this city? I was like, I didn't really do much. I but I could tell you my way around like within <laughs> five miles from the venue yeah I, there was a, a burger there. king there's a burger king and there was a starbucks <laughs> and there was an old man outside feeding his dogs yeah <laughs> exactly yeah like that's that, that's the dream that's the dream right there <laughs> from broadside's uh inception in 2010 how would you say the band has changed over the years um i mean look at us <laughs> yeah we've I had mean, we've undergone through a lot of uh, a lot of member changes uh solidified it now i think we're doing good um but also stylistically like we yeah. broadside started out as a pop punk band um and as we released music we tried to go away from the pop punky side of it to like more of a pop rock sure um while not trying to like completely alienate old listeners Right. Uh, which you will notice on the new record, there are some that some songs that take nods to older broadside sounds and even like uh, tributes to some of the lyrics as well. I mean, it's it's called growth. You know, you got to you got to grow. You can't release the same record over and over and over again. It just doesn't work that way. Exactly. You know, and sometimes as you as you get older, you know, you're taste changes your writing styles will change mm -hmm. and evolve and you know it's... you start listening to different stuff your influences change as well mm -hmm. you know sometimes you start listening to thrash metal and then you just need to write a thrash metal album yeah or you go through the entire uh vans warp tour 2018 listening to k-pop and now you're a K-pop stan, but then every time you try to say hey let's record a song in korean they're like we don't know korean and i'm like okay you grow up guys grow <laughs> yeah. up jeez it's called it's called being rounded yeah we need to be more universal yeah <laughs> marketable yep and k-pop so hot right now i love it can't get enough yeah <laughs> i uh i don't think i listened to any k-pop i'm not gonna lie but uh there was a, a little time i kept sending matt a whole bunch of like uh japanese like women metal bands mm, like because mm -hmm. they're just there's a lot of really cool shit over there <laughs> yeah man and That's it's they it. they really think outside of the box <laughs> matt were there any that stuck out to you any favorites he sent me so many i mean <laughs> <laughs> it was a little much <laughs> i would just send something i'd be like holy shit check this out <laughs> sick 
I, I will say, you know, in preparation for this interview, we, we like to listen, we like listen to discographies. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put Pat out there that he was like, "This is so fucking good," and he listened to your discography like hours. <laughs> <of this song. laughs> yeah, I was like stoked for the whole rest of the album. Like the, everything, it's gonna be great. Stoked. Hell yeah! November can't come fast enough. It really can't. Hell yeah! So we actually only got one more question before we go to our quick break here. If you could give our listeners a piece of advice that you know now that you wish you knew when you were first starting out, what would that be? Um, see, I remember this question coming up when I was listening to the it's, episodes before it's this. A favorite. And everybody has the same answer. Like, oh man, now that I'm on the spot, I don't know. But everybody gives a different answer. Like it's they do. so they do. like this is my favorite because mm -hmm. out of over a hundred episodes, I don't think we've ever gotten like the same answer. Um, I think my piece of advice would be uh get good before you get out. Which mean which I guess kind of means like practice your instrument, get good mm -hmm. at what you're doing, uh, before you start like going and like try to make another band or make a band together uh, with other people because that just saves a bunch of time. You're not at practice just like trying to uh, tune your guitar to each other or <laughs> tuning it like over the amp <laughs> trying to. <laughs> that's, that's part of the fun of being young and starting a band is tuning to each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first couple of first couple of times when you got to tune to a YouTube video in your room, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> but just make sure you try not to mess with the tuning pegs until you get to practice. If you don't have a tuner, it's, it's, <laughs> I that hit so hard to yep. me. Like I remember vividly, like being in a in my my buddy's basement, and like. None of us have a tuning pedal. We're tuning to each other. <laughs> and we suck. You know, like everybody does. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're at the level where you're tuning to each other. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably not as good as you think it is. Oh yeah, no, because the first guy's <laughs> gonna be off. And by the time you get to the last guy, he's already off of what <laughs> everybody else tuned to. So you gotta retune again. You spend like an hour <laughs> tuning. And you're just like, come on, man, what are we doing here? I don't know, but I I see you broke Matt for a bit there. He was just, <laughs> man, he's like, I, man, this is what my guys are doing right now. No, uh, I just I just remember my first band and my 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 singer. I was in high school and his mom apparently had perfect pitch, and so during a show she came up and <laughs> that's like, how I mm. during a show. Mm. Oh my Dude, that's god! Funny. Yeah, that yeah, would have been our last show. That was that was a suppressed memory that I just didn't have until right now. <laughs> I'm that's, so sorry. That's Holy great, crap, dude. That's oh, great. Like, I wish I could have seen that. I wish there that's was like amazing. cameras at that time that you would have been TikTok famous. You know, that. I got I got two tuners on my board now. So <laughs> good, good. It would have been way sicker if she was like tuning her voice over the PA. Yeah, so that the guitarist would try to tune to it. That would have been just <laughs> so just, good. Just coming out of the monitors. <laughs> Spoiler, she did not have perfect pitch either. Oh, oh yeah, I, I could have told you that. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome though. Wow. I love that. Yeah, that's so sick. And now that and now that story is, is here forever. It's, it's forever. immortalized. It's immortalized. <laughs> Want to throw out their names and really get? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> just them. really, just really get them. Yeah, Mrs. Robinson, you came up on yeah. stage during our show. Jeff, she... your mom sucks. She doesn't have perfect pitch. And then Jeff listens, and he's like, "Mom, <laughs> you know, ruin my life." <laughs> now they're talking about me on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> with broadside of no less oh, with broadside oh my god and then their 15 year old kid is like oh my god they're talking to broadside <laughs> those coffee talks guys oh those, those coffee talks guys <laughs> yes that's it that's them the very and same with that 
We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with our next segment. What's up, friends? We're super stoked to tell you that we just partnered with G Fuel. And let me tell you, there is no more pop punk beverage on the market right now than G Fuel. G Fuel keeps you energized, focused, and hydrated. If you go to gfuel.com right now and use code unsigned pop punk, you're going to save 20% off your entire order. You can get it in the tub form and have 40 freaking servings of flavors like Rick and Morty's Unstable Portal Fluid, which is a delicious strawberry limeade, or get something in the can form like Sonic's Peach Rings or Crash Bandicoot's Wumpa Fruit. Go to gfuel.com and check it out for yourself. Let us know what your favorite flavor is. And once again, don't forget to use our code unsigned pop punk to save 20%. It's a heck of a deal, man. And we're back. Thank you so much for sticking around. We are hopping into the segment. The segment. This hard stop. Of all segments. Of all segments. Food for thought. Where we talk about the most important part about being in a band. The Ooh. eating part. The eating part. <laughs> the, the eating part. Room temperature, cherry <laughs> tomatoes, and other <laughs> luxuries you get from being in a band. And other <laughs> luxuries, yep. <laughs> So my first thought, I actually, so I had seen, I was looking around doing a little research of my own. And I saw an interview where a lot of y'all were talking about it. So I want to know, this is a very like divisive topic. Sheets or Wawa? I knew this was coming. Um, <laughs> sheets, sheets 100%. I mean, it's the right answer. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? It's so good. Yeah. It, you can put, you can get a burrito with tater tots in it. Yeah. yeah. Can you get a hoagie with tater tots in it at Wawa? No. No, but you can get their sweet tea. I mean, like, that's from what I, from what I remember from Wawa, that's the claim to fame. It's the sweet tea. I guess, but whenever whenever the Sheets and Wawa debate comes up, it's never they never really bring up the sweet tea. No. Oh. It's it's mostly when I hear it, it's like it's never like defending Wawa, it's just saying that Sheets is bad. <laughs> that just doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> yeah. So I just I don't waste my time with that. Um <laughs> I go to I go to Wawa out of convenience because we have Wawa here in Florida. Okay. Um, but if there was a Sheets uh Within an hour of me, I would go there every time. Yeah. Within an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll drive an hour. No yeah. fucks. I'm out. Hour either way, I'm at the beach. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, I I get that. I drove when I lived in Kansas City for like a year. I drove to Dallas because I needed in and out. Mm -hmm. It was eight and hours. Action, and Action Adventure drove six hours for cookout. Yeah. And <laughs> that's... Like shout out action just adventure do. shout out <laughs> is that one of the episodes you checked out that was one of the episodes i checked out yes. hey oh boy yeah. Passionate and, about cook Passionate. yeah and they opened our uh the chicago date of that home team tour so we got to hang with them for a little bit as well that's awesome the passionate about ketchup not being on hot dogs <laughs> <laughs> i i can get that i've as i've gotten older i've strayed away from ketchup period to where oh. i've only been like only mustard like with uh, fries even it, if i get to fries i'm most of the time i don't even put anything on it oh, it used okay. to be ketchup it used yeah. to be like a ketchup and then a ketchup and mustard like mix but now i'll just eat fries raw yeah i i often will do that too i feel like i agree with that for sure i but I feel like I can't, if I'm going to dip it in something, it's got to be like some sort of ketchup thing or like sweet and sour sauce from McDonald's. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, that's a choice. I, I will say if it's like a thick cut steak fry. Yeah. It has to be uh, ketchup. Yeah. I can't. That's just too much, too much starch. Absolutely. And for it's me never, to try to breathe after that. It's never really like steak. The steak cut fries are never like cooked enough they're never really crispy there's mm -hmm. always some just like flop to it and yeah. it's really disappointing mm -hmm. it's more just lubrication at that point <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> i was a big fan of doing like 
ketchup and mayonnaise. I used to love that. Okay. I did that a couple times. Yeah. That was a good mix. Um, you mentioned In and Out. Uh yeah. have either of you ever had water? Oh yeah. I have. You cut out there. Oh no. You're oh, back. uh Whataburger. Yes. Does I that have. mean anything to you? I mean, it's good. It's not okay. in and out. Okay. okay. I've never I've never had Whataburger, <laughs> but I've heard I have a coworker who lives in Texas and and he well, will not stop talking that's about That's the it. that's another great debate. Yeah, it is. Um the food itself, I mean, I'm vegan, so I can't really Okay. have have a dog in either fight, but uh, I did find Whataburger spicy ketchup in a bottle at oh. Walmart, so that's pretty good. Yeah, the spicy ketchup's that. good. Are you a are you a fan of the Shroom Burger from Shake Shack? What was that sorry? Are you a fan of the Shroom Burger from Shake Shack? I think I had the Shroom Burger because I've only been vegan for seven years, so I still have a pretty good memory of pre-vegan. Okay. Um, I had it just for fun one time uh and i burnt the absolute hell out of my tongue oh no (laughs) oh no uh because isn't there like a like some kind of fried cheese thing on it as well i think so my wife gets it because she's a vegetarian okay she she loves it so much but well there's a fried cheese thing on it and the cheese inside was like magma and just sprayed onto my tongue and it hurts so bad oh no so if that's what it is Keep it. <laughs> Pass. Pass. <laughs> I think. See, the thing is that I can that I can get behind with the like the Whataburger and In and Out like feud is Whataburger is all around good. You know, it's it's it anything you get is it's good. In and Out, you really are only getting like the double double animal style and animal style fries, and if anything else, it's fine. But the double double animal style and animal fries is so good that it like trumps to me and most, you know, in and out people. It kind of makes up for like the lack of a menu, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they have a ton of stuff, but I've never known anyone to get anything else. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But that's that way. I'm that way with a lot of food as well. If I order something and I like it and it's good, I'm not ordering anything else. Right, because what am I going to do? Waste money on something that I end up not liking? It's true. I I kind of stick with you know m- my menu mm-hmm. as well. I can respect that. Yeah. Kind of along those lines. Um, do you have any memorable food spots that you've stopped at over your years on the road? Um, I did have cookout because I've been touring for like ten years, so cookout will always have a special place in my heart. Um, for really showing me like how broad of a food decision you can make. Yeah. uh, Especially with the 40 uh, milkshake flavors. Um, (laughs) I will say melt bar and grilled in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, It's like a gourmet, like grilled cheese place, but the the sandwiches are insane. They're so big and they have like a bunch of specialty ones. Then they also have a vegan menu as well. So I've eaten there both as a vegan and as a non-vegan. Okay. Um, melt is good. Um, there's a place, there's a Thai food place, uh, broadside. We love Asian food. Okay. We love Chinese food, Thai food, Vietnamese food. Um, in Worcester next to the Palladium, there's a Thai restaurant called rice violet that we always go to whenever we play the Palladium. Uh, and it's just so good. Delicious. Nice. Um, nice. That's really all that sticks out that isn't like a chain sure. kind of thing. Have you ever played at um, the Vaudeville Muse in Des Moines, Iowa? No. Okay. There was like this... I think like... I'm not sure like what it was. I think it's some sort of Asian restaurant, but they had... um. They had, uh, gosh, what was it? It was like General So chicken pizza. Ooh. And it was like, and then Crab Rangoon pizza. Like, those were the two. That's and crazy. They were 
amazing. It's like that's what you went there for was to get those two things. That's like ex- the exact kind of food that Dom, our guitar player, will like. Oh, okay, that's there. That's all I'm eating. Yeah, it's incredible. It was so good. I don't remember what it was that's called, nuts. Nuts. but it was it was next to the uh, the vo- it was right across the street from the Vaudeville Muse. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. Uh... <laughs> so um let's see matt matt's always got these good questions that i like so let's say you recently opened up broadside burger and fries Mm -hmm. what's the signature burger combo served it's gonna be a there will be a vegan and non-vegan option of course as it should um it'll be a double cheeseburger uh lettuce tomato pickle onion uh mustard ketchup you know classic yeah, classic um and then fries you can either get regular fries or cheese fries nice i like it like like shredded cheese or are we doing easy cheese ah that's so tough because they're both so good aren't they yeah the, it's a great difference though you could do- um or you could have both as an option I'm gonna go easy cheese. Yeah, so, yeah. That's kind of that's kind of the way you gotta go. Yeah, just crack open that big tin can and give me <laughs> just a ladle of piping hot cheese <laughs> sauce. I I want to I want to feel the burn all the way yeah. down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hell yeah, I love is there, it. Is there a drink in this combo? Oh, uh, drink, drink, drink. Um, peach white claw. No. <laughs> you know what for i don't drink either um sure. but it'll be some kind of like margarita flavored drink okay okay if that exists i mean you can make whatever you want you can make a kitty cocktail version of a margarita this is broadside burger and fries We're you can do what like you Damn, are dude. your okay. own owner <laughs> okay you actually you know what i change it it'll either be coke zero okay or a Long Island iced tea because Dom and Ollie love those. Those are, those are good. Fucked yeah. Up. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> obliterated. Or you're drinking Coke Zero. Yeah, dude, and having a fun time this sitting is, on the picnic bench with me. There was, um, there was a place up in Duluth that we used to play at called Grandma Sports Garden, and uh, they all they at their bar they always had. Five dollar pitchers of Long Island iced tea, pitchers, oh. and we used to just like you would get one and you would just the pitcher was your cup. You would just fucking go for it, and we would just get obliterated basically, dude, <laughs> for like fifteen bucks. I I have a story <laughs> involving Long Island iced teas. Um, 2018, we did a co-headliner with, with confidence. Um, first day was in LA and we were making pretty good time out that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we stopped in, uh, Las Vegas for two nights, I think. Nice. Um, and one of the hotels that we stayed at had a, it's either a TGI Fridays or Ruby Tuesdays, like down in the casino bit of it. Um, and they had a drink special, uh, for Long Island iced teas. (laughs) Um, and I think, uh, Ollie was pretty new to drinking at this point. Um, so he didn't really get it. Sure. Um, but let's just say enough were consumed to make him attempt to army crawl (laughs) all the way back up to our room. Yes. Yeah. So that was pretty fun. (laughs) Yeah. Those Australians. Yeah. They're they're... (laughs) crazy. Careful drinking with the Australians. Uh, I, I mean, you know, that was before that was before we even made it to the tour. This was before the tour even started. They were already in LA. <laughs> this was just us by ourselves at <laughs> Ruby Tuesdays in Las Vegas. <laughs> the you, you got to be careful with like Long Island iced teas. Those will creep up on you. Like, <laughs> so I've witnessed. Yeah, I mean, like, and and at that point, I don't drink a lot now. 
And I definitely didn't drink a lot then. I drank significantly less then. So one of those pitchers, and I was hugging people. I love everybody. <laughs> like, I, as Matt has seen, when I when I drink, I'm a very happy and very social person. When when I'm when I'm drinking, I just want to touch and hug and love people. <laughs> it's I get borderline irritating. <laughs> oh no! But I'm never mean, so that's good. That's always good. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the it. Uh, that's the end of the food for thought segment. Now it's time for rapid fire questions. Friendships will be tested. Rapid fire questions. Just going to speak from the heart, shoot from the hip, whatever, uh, whatever, whatever your heart calls out to you. Got it. All right. Mountain Dew or Mel Yellow? Mountain Dew. Horror or comedy movies? Comedy. This is one you might have seen or might not have seen yet because we just added this question. But what is the most random item you have within your reach right now? Uh, <laughs> Ultra Ball. Oh, yes. you can catch some pretty strong Pokemon with that. Some have even said that I could catch them all with it. Some would say, but I don't know, man. Some of those Pokemon are... The base, the base Pretty stats tough. too high, man. Too high. Pretty tough. Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon? Uh, Nickelodeon. Thin crust or regular crust pizza? Regular. Nice. Lindsay Lohan or Tara Reid? Lindsay Lohan. Mm. Newfound Glory or MXPX? MXPX. Get this. And the new album is so good. I haven't listened to it yet. Oh, you should. It's great. I will. I will. It's 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 very good. I think they've released a whole bunch of videos off of it already. Oh, hell yeah. Chick Magnet was the first song that I learned on bass. That's uh, so many people's like first mm -hmm. song. It's so good. I love that song. Yeah, it's it, great. Mike Carrera, he doesn't get enough like praise for his bass. Like I think Dude, he's yeah. really good. The stuff that he plays and then also having to sing over it as well. Yeah, like playing bass and singing is or playing any instrument and singing is hard, dude. Yeah, and he's doing walking bass lines and stuff a yeah. lot. Mm -hmm. No, he's great. Especially even like the chick magnet, he's playing that and singing. That's yeah, wild yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. Go Mike Herrera. Go Mike. Love him. Lo love Mike. Uh, this is the last question. Can you sing for us the O'Reilly Auto Parts jingle? Yes, I can. <clears throat> oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto parts. Nice. You did it. You killed it. Yes. Last year. Let, let's actually, before we go. Yes. Let's, let's test his knowledge and see if he can hit last season's jingle. This one was significantly more difficult. It okay, was the the bagel bites jingle. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Uh, does it have to be pitch perfect, like no. Matt's friend's no. mom? Okay, no, you can you can be your own pitch perfect. Okay, there's pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, pizza at supper time. When pizza's on a bagel, you can eat pizza anytime. Thanks. Look at you. Dang, there's not a lot of people that were able to pull that one out. I I could tell. I listened to a couple first season <laughs> episodes, and I was like, oh, man, I don't think I even know it. But then as soon as you guys sang it, I was like, oh, that's exactly how yeah, it goes. It's one of those things that almost every single person, like all of season two, we did that. And, you know, a handful of people got it. But almost everyone knew it when you started singing it. Mm-hmm. It's, and I didn't really, I wasn't really a big fan of uh, Bagel Bites when I was younger either. It's more of a Hot Pockets kid. Yeah, I mean, Solid. I, I didn't get a ton of them. Like Hot Pockets, they were great. Um, I usually got Bagel Bites because my mom would have like a, uh, like a Sam's Club membership and, mm -hmm. and Bagel Bites would come in a giant crate. You oh know? yeah, dude. 
it was like 50 of them for like 10 bucks or something like that yeah so. i think our our sam's club big buy was taquitos oh dude yes dude, six of those bad boys when you come home from school watch pokemon on tv mm-hmm. new episodes of pokemon oh yeah can't beat it dude i loved taquitos my uh my go-to snack was I was um a husky kid. That's the size pants I wore in in high in school. Um, my brother. Yep. Size size husky, you know? Mm-hmm. Way way to make kids feel like shit. You're not yeah, large. Right. You're not extra large. You're fucking you're you're a dog. You're husky. I'm built like a I'm built like a dog. What does that even mean? <laughs> what the what is this? Like, why do we do that to kids? Mom, I don't think they have me? that size anymore. <laughs> You bought me dog pants, mom. What am I gonna do with these? <laughs> I had my Canyon River Blues jeans size husky. Mm-hmm. Um your Reeboks that you got off the shelf at Walmart. <laughs> we were there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my go-to um food that I would eat before watching Batman the animated series mm-hmm. was we would get our Sam's Club box of um like generic waffles whatever that it just come in, a, in another crate you know yeah and we would get the waffles and i would put four on a plate and i would and i would take chocolate chips and i would put one into every single syrup trap every single one okay. every <laughs> every <Okay>. one <laughs> <laughs> and that was my uh that was my snack not bad yeah it was it tasted great and just microwave it yeah dude <laughs> Just get that melty chocolate. It was delicious. <laughs> oh shit! But that's it. <laughs> you, you finished the podcast. Yes. Now's your chance. Just let everybody know what you got going on, uh, where they can find you, and what's next. All right. Um, Broadside's got a new album, Hotel Blue, coming out November tenth. Uh, that will be while we are on tour with This Wildlife, Not My Weekend, and Worry Club. You can find me personally, Pat X Diaz, on Twitter and Instagram. You can find Broadside, uh, Broadside Official on Instagram, and then Broadside underscore on Twitter. Anything that you will need to know about that, about any of those tours, will be on those social medias. Um, and then as we're recording this today, September 20th, we just put up uh, pre orders for the new album uh, on our website. It's Hotel Blue, B L E U dot C O. Hell yeah. Get over there. Go buy, go pre-order. I'm going to be cool, getting mine. Cool vinyl variant going on over there. Ooh, what, kind, what kind of variant? Uh, this one's an orange, green, and blue, like really chunky stripes on it. Cool. Uh, so we kind of wanted to go with like a color blocking scheme for this album and like assign a color to each member. So I got orange. Yeah. Dom's green, Ollie's blue. So it's those three colors on the, on the vinyl. So do you always have to wear orange now? Or are you like a Power Ranger? Yeah, more or less like Power Ranger street clothes kind of thing. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, perfect. Well, that's how I'll always remember you. Great, As I'll a, be the orange. You're gonna Ranger. be my orange Power Ranger. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah! But thanks so much for hanging out with us. Uh, Matt and me are going to hop into the Unside Pop Punk News, so don't go away. Here's that tune right here. What's up, friends? It's time for the unsigned pop punk news. And we've got so many things t- to talk about. So many. Right, Matt? I, I, I will say these are these episodes are out of order. I mean, but it's nice to talk to you. Your dog was very nice to talk to last interview we did together. But but doing the unsigned pop punk news to you is very, very, very nice, dude. She was so dainty and beautiful, though. She's just she a, was. she's just a pretty puppy, just a pretty girl. She's didn't, a didn't have a lot of, didn't have a lot of words to, didn't, didn't have a lot, to, didn't want to add anything because she was just so enamored by how perfectly I was doing the new, the news. You were doing such a good job. She didn't want to step on your toes. You know, it. she just wanted to sit in your lap. That's shout out to Mar- Mara. Shout out to Mara. Shout best, out. <clears throat> one of the best doggies in the land. But this is your shout out. If you're listening, Mara, I'll put I'll put the put this on for you to hear. You know, when we're when we're gone and and you're missing me, I'll, I just I always put the podcast on so she can always hear my voice and not feel so alone. <laughs> and that's how we get streams. That's how we get all the streams. 
<laughs> no, that'd be funny though. I mean, all of our streams come from me just playing it on repeat, like start to finish for her every day. So she's not lonely. Hey, whatever works. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, that we want to hear from y'all. So, you know, hit us up. Let's be friends. Comment on this video or on this audio somewhere. Let, let's chat. Leave us messages. Let's be friends. Let's discuss things. Tell us about your pets because we want to hear about your pets. Um, you can join our Discord. You can join us on every social media and talk to us because we post things and we're there looking at it every day. I can't tell you how many times I refresh Instagram hoping that somebody has commented or sent me a message because I'm lonely and I just want to hear from you. Okay. So just do it. Then maybe I won't be so lonely. Okay. Do it. Let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. All you got to do is send him a DM. Hit me in the DMs. Oh. You know it. I know it. We all know it. It's but the there's best new things to know. Of the meeting of the minds that we are having right now. 15% of every purchased gender equality shirt is donated to the Trevor Project, whose mission is to end suicide among LGBT youth, LGBTQ youth, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, so make sure to help us in supporting that amazing cause. Um, also, with that, though, we have new options and variants available. So if you've looked at our website and you've looked at our, our merch site and you said, hey, you know, I love this shirt. I love the idea. But, you know, it's 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 middle of October now. It's getting cold on Science Pop Punk. It's, you know, I, I'm going to be January and December. My 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 forearms are going to be chilly. <laughs> we got you, boo. <laughs> We've thought about you. Thought about it. Check it out. Check it out. We got you. And now you can support that amazing cause like we support that amazing cause year round Hearts. love it with maybe we should put it on like water bottles do you guys you could support that and stay hydrated coffee cups coffee cup i mean sky's the limit sky is the limit also one of the best parts about it being colder is fantasy football season Football season, sports. sports, sports ball. We all love sports ball. And if you don't, one of the thing that we want to we want to bring you in on this because you, because I like sports ball. I like all the sports. I think it's fun. I like enjoy. I I like watching it. I can't play it. I'm not very good. But one of the things we started doing is we have our second annual Unside Pop Punk Fantasy Football League. It's going on right now. We have twelve bands going head to head some of your favorite bands and you can root for them you can watch each week and see how they're doing where they're who they're playing where they are in the stands and you can also support them by picking up their limited edition team shirts so it's got it's got the our football logo on the front and then on the back it's got their name and number on it and it's awesome. And there's for a limited time only. So you got to get it now before it's not there anymore. And it's cool. And one of the things that we're doing, we haven't, as of today, we haven't picked yet. But once we have made enough in sales to buy a trophy for the winner, because that's how it's going to, you know, this is going to help go towards a trophy. Yep. But once, we have enough for the trophy. Then all proceeds after that, all of it, goes to a charity. We haven't figured out what charity we're going to donate it to yet, but all 12 teams, 12 bands will be involved in the decision-making, and we will pick which charity we're going to donate that money to. So get support your favorite bands, support your favorite fantasy football band team, and support everyone support you know what 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 charity we're gonna donate to and it's gonna be for a good cause it's always a good cause mm -hmm. you know i'd like to think it my brain right now my brain's going you know what we should we should support i i think like something something kid related you know kid like 
kids being able to play sports type thing. Since it's a support thing, let's support kids in sports. That's my thought. I don't know what we're going to do yet, though. But that's my idea. What do you think, Matt? I like ideas. I like ideas are cool. But you can get so get that. Get them now. Get them while they're hot. Linus, they already got all their shirts, and they fit like a glove. Like very no, not like a glove. It's not super tight. They're just, they're very nice. They fit. They fit the way you want your shirt to fit. <laughs> and that, my friends, is the way the news goes. Thank you again to Pat from Broadside for hanging out with us today. Thanks to Matt for always being my friend. Thanks to Gibby. Gibby needs to come back. We miss him. Don't you all miss him? I miss him. We haven't seen him in a forever. In a Fortnite, one would say. Fortnite. Not like the video game Fortnite, but like the old time he's saying Fortnite. Um, thanks so much to Lawrence for making all of our cool art, making uh, us look cool and I mean, making me feel like we look cool. I think we look cool. I hope you think we look cool too. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much to Ross for the, all the website updates and, and the website makings. And if you need a website, go to Ross from Electric Kiwi. Have him make you the top of the line website. And he's just a beautiful human being. Um, can't recommend him enough. Same thing with Lawrence Crow. Get Lawrence Crow to make all of your art. All of it. Just all of it. All from of it. Start to finish. It's Do whatever it. you need, he will. You want to be branded correctly? We talked Lawrence about, Crow. about doing about doing it, practicing and doing it right. Lawrence Crow and Ross from Electric Huey are gonna get you started on the right foot to do it right. Darn tootin'. And Darn that, tootin'. my friends, is it for tonight. We'll see you next Monday, friends. Bye. Thank you so much for checking out the show. Please hit that like, subscribe, or follow button so you never miss an episode. And thank you so much to those of you who already are. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or anywhere else you stream your podcasts. If you're in the position to help us grow and like behind-the-scenes access and exclusive shows, head on over to our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash unsigned pop pump let us know in the comments who you'd like to see on the show and what other content you'd like to see thank you all so much